For Bismarck, with terror of the sea, stuff with guns as big as steers and with shells as big as trees. We gotta sink a battleship that's making such a fuss. We have to sink the Bismarck, cause the world depends on us. Now hit the deck, throw in boys, and spin those guns around. Cause when we find the Bismarck, we gotta cut her down. The hood found the Bismarck, and on that fatal day, the Bismarck started firing 15 miles away. We gotta sink the Bismarck, was the battle sound. But when the smoke had cleared away, the mighty hood went down. I forget the next lyric, damn it. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, that was part of a song. If you want to find out the rest of it, go on to YouTube and look it up. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. I was probably just about like an hour or two. That was great. Does anyone want to go next? That's all you. I'll go. No one wants to go. I'll go. Oh, we left this phone. Uh, left your phone. Oh, whoops. I thought I was forgetting something. Oh, you're gone. You're wrong. Make sure you have everything okay. before you leave. So, um, I wrote this out of, like, sort of writer's block today. Um, this is part two of something that I published in the Barger. Um, I guess a summary of it would just be like, um, it's a husband and wife. The husband goes off to war. He ends up dying, and the wife finds the news that he has died and, and ends off that way. Um, part two is basically the aftermath of that. So, we'll go from that. <coughs> The funeral was beautiful, planned with the precision that all military funerals were. It flew by, flew by like the wind that day, brisk and cold. She hadn't even realized how long she was standing by his grave until the last person touched her shoulder to give her their condolences before departing. But she stayed there, vigilant at his side even in death. It was how he was with her, even if he was a even if he was a thousand miles overseas for a quarter of their relationship. She wasn't upset about it. She wasn't angry. She just wished she could have been there when he passed. Could have held his hand and told him that everything was all right. Now she wouldn't be able to hold that hand, to see that smile after a long day, to feel his warm embrace on a cold winter's night. She didn't notice when the rain came, soaking her hair and her dress to the point where it almost began to weigh her down. After a few more minutes of standing, her knees finally gave out and the tears began to fall. They fell not only for her lost love, but, the, but for the memories and the shared moments that they would never have again. She could remember the first time that they had gotten stuck in the rain coming home from a night out. He had draped his jacket over her head to stop the droplets from getting her hair wet. She would never feel that protection from him again. It began to get dark out the sun nowhere in sight as the rain continued to come down in sheets around her. However, she didn't want to leave him in this lonely place. He didn't deserve something like this, to be left out here without her. She also knew that he would have been yelling at her for just sitting there in the rain for so long without an umbrella. She could practically hear his voice in her ear saying, you'll catch a cold here, go back inside. That voice is what caused her to turn away, face twisted in anger and frustration. How could he tell her to leave him here alone? Didn't he want her to stay with him? As she climbed into her car, the same car that he once used, she screamed. The same anguished cry that she had let out so many weeks ago. Her head rested against the steering wheel as broken sobs wrapped her small body, a body that had gotten thinner as weeks progressed in a flash was a cry that she had held in for so long, one that she had held since the day after she had gotten the news, hell bent on putting up a strong front of a strong wife to a family of friends. However, no one knew of the inner hurt that lies beneath the mask she bared. No one had asked about, no one had asked because they were so focused on his tragedy, and she was all right with that. 
Being seen as the strong wife in a time of tragedy was poetic to people, and she was happy to play that part. It was the least she could do for her mourning in-laws. Now that the mask was cracking, now that she was left alone with her thoughts, she was finally able to release all the, emotion, all the emotions she had held in throughout the week. They came pouring out like a waterfall, unable to be stopped. It took an another hour of crying in the parking lot before she finally decided to turn the car on. She turned the heat on high, grabbing a shawl and wrapping it around her shoulders before buckling the seatbelt. As she drove, she began to think about things like how they met, some of their dates together, his laugh. Some of the things she remembered made her smile and laugh, like the time he spilled red wine on his dress shirt and began to chase her around the house like a zombie. He had the best sense of humor. Even when her jokes were the dumbest things she could come up with, he would laugh anyway and always tell her how funny she was. And she loved that about him. Her smile never faded as she came to her now single apartment. Her feet guided her to the top of the stairs and to the front door. As she began to open the door, her neighbor caught her attention. They were coming down the hall carrying their trash to the dumpster. He seemed to pause when he saw her, fumbling over what to say before settling on it. You know, he's not really gone, he finally stated. I know, was her reply as she smiled by his side. 